I was telling y'all, it's official. Curtis Samuel has been placed on short-term IR. The injured reserve list. The NFL has new injured reserve protocols and rules as of this season that literally just went into place since August. So I'm gonna break all of that down so you can understand how long Curtis Samuel will be on the IR and why and all of that type of stuff. Also, the team captains have been announced. So I'm gonna break that down as well. A lot to talk about in this video. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video like this one, I'm excited about the fact that we're starting to get a lot of the fantasy leagues done. I may do two more Saturday, so be on the lookout for that league link because it's first come, first serve. I randomly live stream, throw the link in the chat. You gotta be the first one to get there. And I'm so excited about Sunday, man. We got football back, and that Bucks Cowboys game was really good. That's probably gonna end up being one of the best games of the season and that was the first game of the season so i think this is just gonna be a really fun year in general but without further ado let's get it All right, so Curtis Samuel was placed on short-term IR. Well, he will be later today. Ron Rivera spoke about it in his press conference, but they haven't officially done it yet, but it will be done. And I know some people are like, short-term IR? I thought people had to be out at least eight weeks and you know all of this type of stuff, but it's a new rule. And the first part of the rule that's crazy is that unlimited players can return from a team's injured reserve list in 2021. Remember, we used to have a select few guys where it was like, all right, you bring this guy back Back from injured reserve then you're risking not being able to bring this other guy back but now with these new rules mainly because of covid and all of that they made it so you can bring unlimited players back from the ir that's groundbreaking in itself i mean if you have eight players on the ir and for any reason you end up wanting to bring all eight of them back at some point in the season you can it's crazy and it used to be you would have to wait eight weeks to bring a player back from ir now you only have to wait three you have to miss three games slash 21 days, and then you're allowed to come back off of IR. That's also groundbreaking and unheard of. They were headed this direction with the rules last year, and now it's like officially official, and it may stay this way until further notice. And I like these rules. I mean, we could have really have used this during our super hurt years where we were the most hurt team in the NFL. Gladly, we don't have to deal with that anymore, but it's nice to know that we can place Curtis Samuel on IR and get him back within three weeks. Like, he can come back as soon as the Falcons game, October 3rd. Before two years ago, if Curtis Samuel were to be placed on IR, he wouldn't be able to return until the bye week and then start getting ready for the Buccaneers, which is Sunday, November 14th. So that rule change helps us a lot with this Curtis Samuel situation. And also to calm your nerves, it's not like the injury is that bad. Basically, Ron Rivera put him on the injured reserve so that he could just calm down and take his time. Ron Rivera said that he was concerned that Curtis Samuel was pushing himself too hard to play week one. Like he was just doing whatever he could to rush it. And he was willing to do things that may harm his body more so long term just so he could be there for his team against the Chargers opening weekend. And so again, Ron Rivera basically placed him on IR so he he could just sit down and take his time. Now Curtis Samuel knows he has to wait at least 21 days to play again. So there's no need for him to keep pushing himself too hard and trying to rush back within these next three days like he was doing this whole week. Because even though he had that minor setback a couple of days ago, he was going out there and trying to push himself to be ready for the Chargers this Sunday. And Ron Rivera's like, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I know you, you want to get back. I know you feel like you're letting your teammates down. You're letting the organization down. But man, we need you long term as well more importantly and we cannot have you making the injury worse by pushing yourself too hard Ron Rivera understands even me as a fan understands he wants to be out there with his brothers but he's gonna end up causing himself more harm long term than if he would have just wait and Ron Rivera just went ahead and pulled a move to force him to sit down now he just has to wait Ron Rivera basically said the idea behind this is to let him continue to rehab take pressure off of him and allow him to get completely healthy emphasis on completely again it's only three weeks so it's not even that bad again this is more so Ron Rivera just sitting them down and telling them chill out for a second more so than oh man Curtis Samuel's injury is even worse than we thought like it's not that at all and Ron Rivera had a pretty hot response when asked if surgery was an option 
He said a bunch of stuff, but the general basis of it was that surgery is not an option. But, I mean, he sounded a little angry about that question. And so that's good to hear that he's that serious about the fact that surgery is not an option. The injury is not that bad, I repeat. And I do feel sorry for Curtis Samuel because being on the COVID-19 list definitely set his recovery back. But Rivera feels like with just having a couple of more weeks off and a couple of more weeks of rest, he should be straight to go and right back to where he was before the injury. But this also means that, man, I think it's Deami Brown season. I mean, I think Cam Sims is definitely going to be able to contribute in a larger way because of this as well. But I think it's time for Deami Brown to step up as that second receiver. I think it's going to be Terry McLaurin, then Deami Brown, at least until Curtis Samuel gets back. I know Adam Humphreys is going to be the slot receiver, the safety blanket. I think Cam Sims will be a decent target to throw to, especially if you just want to throw it up to a big body, let him make a contested catch. But I think it's De'Ami Brown season, especially with the deep balls. Oh, yeah, I think it's De'Ami Brown season. I'm excited. And with Curtis Samuel, how he was going to get used out of the backfield so much, I think J.D. McKissick gets some of those touches that Curtis Samuel was originally going to get. Remember, Curtis Samuel is used on sweeps, screens, all of that type of stuff. And not to say that Terry McLaurin, Antonio Gibson, and De'Ami Brown can't do those things as well, but you could tell that Scott Turner designs his offense around Curtis Samuel doing that, and J.D. McKissick as well. And with Curtis Samuel out for three weeks, J.D. McKissick is going to pick up a lot of that out of the backfield, but not running in between the tackles work that Curtis Samuel was going to get. Antonio Gibson is more of a running back. Jared Patterson is more of a real running back. They run in between the tackles along with being involved in the passing game, screen game, maybe some sweeps and stuff like that. But that's really J.D. McKissick's and Curtis Samuel's niche. So we're going to see a little bit more of J.D. McKissick than we probably expected to early on in this season. And remember, he helped us big time last year, bailed us out of a lot of bad situations. I don't know what we would have done without J.D. McKissick last Last year so I just didn't expect them to completely disappear in the offense but I did feel like Curtis Samuel with his ability to do all of that Tavon Austin type stuff the gadget receiver type of things and then with Antonio Gibson finally becoming more involved in the passing game as they've already said in press conferences I just thought JD McKissick would have a far more limited role this year compared to last year but at least for these first couple of weeks he's gonna be pretty involved in the offense similar to how he was last year now I'm not expecting Ryan Fitzpatrick to dink and dunk it to him as much as Alex Smith did but I do expect to see a lot of JD McKissick against the Chargers Giants and the Bills again along with De'Ami Brown getting some more targets and I'm excited about De'Ami Brown man I know I talked about JD McKissick for a while but De'Ami Brown is the guy I'm most excited about seeing while Curtis Samuel is out moving on the 2021 Washington football team captains have also been announced there's eight of them you have quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick of course Wide receiver Terry McLaurin, of course. Tight end Logan Thomas. That's kind of expected, but I'm still happy to see him step up and earn that role. Guard Brandon Sheriff, of course. Defensive end Chase Young, of course. And it's crazy because we already know that Chase Young is our Brian Dawkins, our Ray Lewis. He's literally the spirit of the team probably the captain of the captains like he's the leader of the team but at the same time he's the second youngest defensive player on the entire team the only player younger than him is Derek Forrest and it's not even by a lot then of course defensive tackle Jonathan Allen that makes a lot of sense safety to Shazer Everett which is kind of crazy because it seems like he barely made the team but he is one of the leaders of the team and then you have John Bostic which is a little weird on one side, I can see it because he is technically the quarterback of the defense. He's the leader of the defense. He's the brains of the defense. But at the same time, ideally, you want Jamin Davis to take that role over. And I guess he would just take John Bostick's captain spot when he does. And I'm not even going to say if. I'm going to say when. Once Jamin Davis is able to take over as our starting Mike linebacker, John Bostick really has no case to being a captain on this team. Because out of those top eight guys, he's easily the least good. I'm not going to say the worst because it sounds like he's terrible. But, I mean, literally all he's really good at, in my opinion, is being the quarterback of the defense. You don't depend on him in the run-stopping game. You definitely don't depend on him in coverage. He's actually a liability in coverage. So he's really just not a good player. I like him as a veteran depth piece but not only as a starting Mike linebacker but a captain on this team that's a little interesting I mean him and DeShazer Everett are easily the two least effective and productive players out of all of the captains again not saying John Boston and DeShazer Everett are bad but they're just not to the level of a Jonathan Allen Chase Young Brandon Sheriff Logan Thomas Terry McLaurin and Ryan Fitzpatrick but they are veterans and they have important roles on this team so I'm not surprised but it's just interesting to hear their names mentioned with those other six 
So yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video, especially this Curtis Samuel situation. And as always, please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. And I always appreciate all of my supporters, man. Big shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel. A special shout out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose names you see scrolled on the screen right now. Man, I really appreciate all y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.